you recently wrote, co-wrote a paper um, underestimating the challenges of avoiding a ghastly future, which cataloged a lot of risks to biodiversity, species, ecosystems. Could you just give us an overview of, of your general findings, either in that paper or generally, um, you know, what percent of natural ecosystems have been lost in the last 50 yeah. years, animals, et cetera? Well, I think uh, one of the most important uh, uh, contributions I have uh, done in science has been to try to understand what is the magnitude of extinction crisis. And I was fortunate to go to Stanford to do a sabbatical and meet uh, Paul Ehrlich. And uh, talking to him, uh, I developed these ideas and in, in where I was, I wrote the first paper on extinctions, a species ex extinction in Mexico in 1992, something like that, when there was the first president in Mexico who was very neoliberal. And at that time I thought, I, I wrote that being so neoliberal could be uh, really good if we will take care of uh, the important thing of the environment, but also could be the tipping point to make uh, humanity in, a, in, in really bad shape. And, and then I went to Stanford and I got exposed to so many people and so many ideas. And then one of the first questions that I wanted to answer is, at that time, many people would think that extinction was bad, but it was part of evolution. Let's remember the evolution world with extin extinctions and speciation, and uh, that's the basic, one of the basic processes of evolution. So um, working there, uh, first of all, I was uh, one day listening to, to Paul Ehrlich talking about a species extinction, a, a, a population's extinction, and it occurred to me that that was one of the critical points. We, we were not understanding the magnitude of extinction because we were looking at a, 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 the species that become extinct. It's like if you, if you go and see the problem of a big pandemic, pandemia like they were having now, just counting the people who died. Obviously, this is just a, the final end and a tiny part of the whole problem. So at that time, uh, uh, I wrote a paper with Paul Ehrlich on what we call the, uh, we evaluate for the first time, what was the uh, uh, extinction, the magnitude of population extinctions in a whole group in the planet, in this case, mammals. We were able to, uh, to, to, to gather a database with the distributions of species in the 1900s and the current distribution. That was around 2000. And what we saw is a, a brutal, literally a brutal destruction of populations of many species. The range was like a very big range, 100% was contracted to 20, 15, 50%. So uh, the range contraction obviously implicate the, the losing the populations. That was uh, the first time I, I could see that the magnitude of what we were doing to the uh, uh, planet in uh, biodiversity in terms of uh, the extinction was really big. And then we... So, so you're saying that um, if, if you just count the extinctions like the dodo bird or the Tasmanian tiger, that you're actually underestimating the magnitude because there's a difference between population extinction and species extinction. Definitely, that's definitely very important. Let me give you an example. If we have jaguars in Mexico, it doesn't matter if they become extinct here, if there are jaguars in Brazil, in terms of the role and function they play in ecosystems, and in the provision of environmental services. That is all the benefit that we get from nature. So the local, local, uh, local uh, disappearance of populations are basically like uh, uh, extinctions, called extinction. Because is that, is that what's to... called an ecological extinction? Uh, yes, it, it could be, yeah, it's an ecological extinction. It is similar. Ecological extinction is when you have a species, you know, in an area, uh, 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 let, let's say, first of all, population extinction, uh, all species are made up by several populations. And when you, the species become extinct, we had lost all the populations. But those populations at the uh, 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 local and regional level, 
you know, are so important Then when you lose them, you lose the value and it's like it was a whole extinction. Can, can you give an example of uh, one of those species and that well, that happened? Well, just as I said, the, the, well, the elephants, you see the distribution of the elephants, they were just at the beginning of this uh, century, almost one million elephants. Now 20, there is 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there were yeah. one, something, one million. And now there are 250,000 elephants in the whole world, in the whole world, in whole Africa. So if you see the, the map of the distribution, you will see an area most of Africa will be covered by the distribution of elephants. Now you will see just dots, dots in the, in the continent, a small population dispersed throughout the continent. So it means that we have lost elephants in most of Africa. And by losing them, we have lost the role, what they do. And there are many roles that the elephants have. And let me give you two examples. On the one hand, for instance, they disperse lots of uh, plants that they eat and then maintain the savanna because they destroy trees to eat the bark. So the savannas, when you lose the elephants, are invaded by uh, scrubs and trees and eventually you lose the savanna and you lose the grasslands with so many animals. So the elephants are critical to maintain the savanna. But recently, other scientists have shown that when you lose the elephants and other uh, 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 ungulates and other uh, species of uh, large uh, mammals that feed on plants, uh, the grasses grow much uh, larger, and on those grasses, the populations of many rodents exploit, become very abundant, and those rodents have many diseases that affect humans. So by losing the elephants, you are losing the composition of the plants, and then this is causing a massive increase of rodents, and those rodents transmit diseases to uh, humans, to domestic animals and to wildlife. So who will think that the elephant, the presence of the elephant will be linked to the presence and the abundance of rodents in Africa? Uh, a conservation biologist might think that, but you're right. We don't normally think in terms of systems. There is that story, I don't know how true it is, about the elk and the wolves and the ecosystems in the Yellowstone, similar sort of thing. Um, it's very similar, and, it, and it's, part, it's uh, basically it, it is basically correct. Yeah. So, um, in the case of the elephants, just to um, highlight that, what are the main reasons that we've gone from a million down to two hundred and fifty thousand in the last twenty-five years? Well, uh, basically, it's uh, poaching, and. We are losing habitat, they're losing habitat more, uh, as more humans, uh, there are more human population, we need more food, so more habitat of the elephant is being destroyed to plant crops. But basically the, 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 the main problem is we're still killing elephants for uh, their ivory. Just to give you an idea, 15 years ago, uh, an elephant was being killed. Every 15 minutes, an elephant was illegally killed. Right now, even now, an elephant is being killed every 40 minutes illegally to take their dust, tusks to, to, to the markets, especially in China. And uh, what is really incredibly surprising is that the uh, tusks are useless. Uh, they, are, they use them for, for, for uh, uh, ornamentals and for some crafts, but we are killing the elephants because this huge appetite for ivory. And, and now the, the mafias in China and in Africa, in Mexico, everywhere in the US, the mafias dealing with the trade of animals and in this, in this specific case of, Africa, of African elephants ha, have more power, more money, more guns than the guards and many times that the local governments. It's a real, real uh, uh, bad problem.